So now we're going to learn how to break vectors into components. And we'll talk a little bit about why, but mostly we're going to focus on how to do it. So you guys understand that vectors have a direction and a magnitude. They can be drawn as arrows. And when you're trying to break vectors into components, that is the first step, is to sketch the original vector. So I'm going to draw the original vector. Now, I can't break anything into components unless I know what the directions I'm interested in are. Does that make sense? I need to know whether I'm breaking it into X and Y components, or North or South, or East or West components, or whatever. So the second step is to make sure I define which way is X and which way is Y. So in this example, I will call X to the right and I will call y up. So here I have a vector a. I don't know what it is, a force, a velocity, an acceleration, a displacement. It could be anything. And it's pointed this way. How much of this vector is pointing in the x direction and how much of it is pointing in the y direction? Because component, you might know, is a fancy word for part. I can break the component into parts. And if I do that, I'll break it into an x component, which I'm going to draw here in orange. It's an arrow. I'll fill in my little arrow head and I'll call it AX. It's the X component of vector A. And the Y component would be up. I'll call that AY. I hope you remember how to add vectors. You can see that the original vector A is equal to AX plus AY. Tip to tail, tail to tip. You add the vectors tip to tail, and the result is from the tail of the first to the tip of the other. I know this guy's the answer because he's smooching the other guy. He's got his bum to the other guy's bum. That's how you know he's special. He's the resultant. Okay, back to components. So the first step was to sketch the vector. Then we defined x and y. Now can you see how I made a triangle? I made a triangle, but not any old triangle. It's a right angle triangle. So step three is to draw a right angle triangle. But it's important, it's easy in this case, but it's important that you understand that the original vector is the hypotenuse. And that the other two vectors are in the x and y direction. The other two sides of the triangle are in the x and the y direction. So the triangle that we draw, the hypotenuse is the original vector, and the other two are the sides are in the x and y direction. So now what do I do? Ah, piece of cake. Now I have a triangle and I just do a little bit of trig. I've got to know one of the angles. I've got to know this angle theta and then how big is AX? If you know you're not great at trig, don't try to guess which one you're doing. Just pick a trig function. So what's the cosine of theta? Well, the cosine of this angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so AX over A. And then when I rearrange it, I can see that AX must be A cos theta. Okay. Now I won't be too surprised because the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. AY will be A sine theta. That's not very difficult. Step number four is to do some trig. Trigification. Now, I'm pretty much done, but there's one thing that I haven't really been careful about. I said to the right was the x direction, which means to the left is the negative x direction. My answer here is positive because it's in the positive x direction. Similarly here, ay is up. Up is what I called positive y. So technically, these are both positive. That's pretty easy to get, but when they're negative, people mess them up. So the fifth little step that I like to say is I gotta double check my sign. Did I get it right? The plus or the minus. To see if we understand it, let's try another example over here. Let's call it part of the same question. So we've already said x is to the right and y is up, but now I've got some other vector, b. And let's say I told you that this angle, I'll call it phi so it's different, I've already said that x is to the right. I can't go change that in the middle of a question. I'm not sure you can see that. I can't go change my coordinate system in the middle of a question, so I've got to stick with it. I've sketched my vector. I've defined my x and y. Now I have to draw a 
right angle triangle where the original vector is the hypotenuse and the other two are in the x and y direction. So this is a y, it's pointing down, and this is a x pointing to the left. a y plus a x equals b. Oh, Morin, this is b x. This is b y, obviously. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So I've drawn my big triangle, now I'm going to do some trig. Phi, cos, what am I going to get? The cos of this angle phi is by over b. So in this case, b equals, sorry, by equals b cos theta. And bx is going to be b sine theta. So I shouldn't memorize that AX is always cos and that AY is always sine. I've got to draw my triangle and then use my trig brain to get the function right, to pick the right trig function. Don't forget step five though, my signs. BY is in the negative Y direction. So I'm going to call BY negative B cos theta. Whatever my answer is, I've got to make sure it's negative. Same with BX, it's left. We said right was positive, so that's going to be negative BY sine theta. And that's how you break vectors into components.